Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this river scene with pollarded willows. Pollarded willows are a sort of cut back every couple of years and grow in this kind of strange but interesting way. This encourages their root systems to grow um, quite expansively and I think it holds the riverbanks together in places, especially places where they're prone to flooding. It's similar to coppicing, but it's done sort of at the, the branch of the trunk where the branches form rather than at the base so that the branches grow out straight and stiff like this, giving them a very distinctive look. So I started off with a reasonably detailed sketch on um, hot press Saunders Waterford cotton paper. It's 11 inches by 12 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. It's taped to my board and my board has just been laid flat. The reason for this is I want to get a good soaking of water into the paper before I start. Um, I've used a lot of graphite. You could say this is a pencil and wash as my line work is going to with, done with the pencil will guide me. So I want to sort of set the graphite into the paper. I can do this by lightly brushing over with water, allowing the water to sink into the paper. The graphite won't smudge. If any of it does, it doesn't matter too much, but you can see that nothing's lifting. But what this will do is the water will kind of just sort of trap the graphite particles um, just lower into the paper so that they will be nicely fixed. I've picked my board back up to 45 degrees, my normal angle, so that gravity will help me paint. And I'm going to just paint this really loosely. The first layer will be the sky and the land. Now that's um, yellow ochre and cypress burnt brown. You can use burnt umber if you don't have that colour. And I'm going to use some indigo genuine. If you don't have indigo genuine, then any indigo substitute, which are the ones that you usually get, um, will do. Just blending those across with my large Escoda synthetic squirrel mop. As always, um, I'm not using local colour, I'm pushing the local colour, I'm pushing those autumn colours a little bit further, um, just to express the kind of atmosphere and the ambience that I want with my limited palette. And here I want a sort of rugged, sort of desolate, wild, windswept winter day. This riverbank seems to be formed of two sections, one which I'm painting now with yellow ochre and cypress burnt brown um, that leads up to where the willows are planted. And then the second, um, I'm assuming that this is because the river goes into flood sometimes, but not often, so that you get this sort of secondary riverbank growing up um, when it's not in flood. And it's just on the edge of that that these willows have been planted um, in order to help increase the flood barrier um, and stop the water from flooding uh, too much further into the bank. So you can see I'm starting to build up some darker tones along this river bank edge and underneath the willow trees and that helps to establish them and a flick of clean water um, onto that um, yellow ochre and cypress burnt brown there just to add a little bit of texture um, just to um, add interest and then I can start to um, paint the sort of something and nothing foreground. This is a loose painting so I'm really not painting any detail. I'm trying to use a minimal amount of brushwork to establish the scene and I shall do this with much richer colour straight away because this is in the foreground um, and I want to just bring this area forward and push everything else back. And because my board is an angle of 45 degrees, the sky wash is drifting down a little, so I'm just clearing off that bead of paint um, across the horizon with a clean, damp brush. And now you can see I've added even more tone with um, dark mixtures of the indigo and the cypress burnt brown mixed together, which gives me this sort of deep greyish black, um, which will lighten back a little bit more, but then I can add more layers. Using the corner of a chopped up plastic store card, you could use a fingernail, the end of a paintbrush or a palette knife, I'm running through grass textures, etching into the damp paint. 
Um, some of the marks will look dark, some will be lighter where I push the paint away with the corner of the card. It just gives me some lovely, natural, spontaneous textures for these wild grasses. And now using the corner of the mottler brush to get in some of that dark, um, rich mixture of indigo and cypress burnt brown across uh, the ground level and up, beginning to come up into the trunk of the trees in places. So that's just about it for this first wash or these first washes, just using the corner of the um, mottler brush to dot in a few sort of ragged um, dead grass and seed heads across above the ground level here and there. And now I'm going to leave it to dry completely, then come back and add a few finishing touches. The reference photo for this and the line work, the graphite line work, will be available to download from my Patreon page. So if you're interested in that, please follow the links below. So here it is, it's dried back a little bit lighter, although it's a bit deeper in tone or hue than this in real life because the sun again is shining in through my windows. It's a lovely autumn afternoon. I'm going to start putting in the, the branches and a bit of tone into the trunks of the pollarded willows, starting off with the main one here. I'm using my Pro Art Size 1 sword liner. It's got a long, sort of thin, whippy, flexible brush head that holds a lot of paint. So using my dark mixture of Cypress Burnt Brown and Indigo Genuine, I'm filling in and painting over some of the penciled in branches. I can get some really nice fine lines with the sword liner. Um, if you haven't got a sword liner, you can use a rigger brush or a liner brush um, or even just any sort of small round brush. But you want to make sure that it can hold plenty of paint so that you can get these nice long flexible branches painted in in sort of one brush stroke, if you see what I mean. And that's the beauty of the sword liner or a dagger brush. You could also use a pin striping brush for this. So I'm working across the pollarded willow, bringing up the branches in this very distinctive shape that's very distinctive, as I say, for the pollarded willows, putting in some of the branches in the distant willow behind, but using much fainter paint for that. Once it's nearly run out on the brush, I'll put the brush strokes into the distant one so that this uh, foreground willow um, is much more in focus with the stronger, sharper focus and the deeper tones that I'm using here. And then I can go in and around my branches, filling in the darker tone, but leaving some lighter areas for the crossover of some of the tangled branches growing out from the head of the pollarded willow and all the way down the trunk. I want to sort of put in plenty of dark tones, but I still want to keep some lighter areas that I sort of picked out with the drawing and the sketch at the beginning. I'm doing the same to the second one, but with slightly um, paler, slightly less pigmented paint so that the foreground one, as I said earlier, stands out a lot more and the paler paint pushes the smaller distant tree further into the background. Then I can start bringing in a little bit of detail, not too much, um, along putting in the grasses, the seed heads, that sort of thing. And now I'm just going to leave all of this to dry completely and then I'm going to come back and very faintly put in um, the water in this river. For this, I'm going to use my Mottler brush again, and I'm going to use quite a, a watery mixture of Indigo Genuine. I'm just pulling a little bit of paint behind those branches there, keeping it quite faint, quite understated. 
It's a fairly fast flowing river, so I'm not looking for reflections, ripples, detail, anything like this. Um, I can knock it back with a tissue if I need to and then go back and put a little bit of darker paint just near the shore. Keeping the brush strokes horizontal keeps the water fairly flat. And now my three quarter inch flat brush. I really like this one for flattening out water, thinning through the paint, sort of feathering horizontal uh, lines that just give some continuity to the water um, in a very subtle way. And that's, that's it for the water. It's completely done now. And now back to my really dark mixture of indigo and cypress burnt brown and pulling out some much darker shadows. And I start off by going in really dark, but then I use a clean damp brush to knock it back and soften it until I get the shadows to look the way I want them to. So adding a few flicks of grasses um, along that shoreline, I can dab back and knock back a little bit of paint, to soften back a bit more. I just do whatever I think it needs for this something and nothing loose foreground. So lightly dabbing with a tissue gives me a really nice texture around the tree. And now that I've added a few more darks into the pollarded willows, um, I think it's pretty much finished. But I always like to check by removing the tape. And then once the tape's removed, I can see how it looks with its clean white border. This allows me to look at it with fresh eyes and I can see whether it needs just a few little tweaks here and there. Remember to pull your masking tape away from your painting so it doesn't tear into the painting if it can be a bit too tacky sometimes. Now here it is against a slightly cleaner board and um, I'm quite pleased with the way it turned out. I think it's nice and fresh. It's got that sort of rugged, desolate feel that I want from this um, stark sort of winter riverside scene. If we look closely, you can see there's some nice details, but not too much um, in the pollarded willow where the um, overlapping branches grow out from the head where they've been cropped back the previous year. Um, and the river is very faint. Distant shore is, is faint too. And I think the sky just gives us that nice sort of windswept look. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. And happy painting. Bye.